Barges on the Mississippi are moving again, but the relief is only temporary. The Tennessee Valley Authority says it has cut back on hydroelectric power. Vince Miller will answer questions on what's been causing this drought, and Keith Zanzinger of the Cobb County Georgia Extension Service will give us some tips on how we can all conserve next on the Weather Channel Drop Watch. Welcome to the Weather Channel Drought Watch. I'm John Doyle, alongside meteorologist Vince Miller, familiar face to all of our viewers. He'll be fielding some of your phone-in questions just a little later. Beginning with our presentation at 8 p.m. Eastern Time last night in our program today, the Weather Channel will begin a twice-daily special series focusing on the drought. We'll talk with the expert about its causes and what we can do to help. And we'll answer your phone-in questions, too. The drought is not a localized effect, of course, but a national problem from water rationing in San Francisco to parched corn crops in the Midwest to the lowest levels of the Mississippi River on record. Barges were moving again yesterday on the Mississippi after a three-day standstill, but while dredging by the Army Corps of Engineers has reopened the river, the relief is only temporary. Here's Dennis Smith. Get you one or two men, whatever it takes to go. What it takes to go on the Mississippi right now is continuous dredging. The river flow is now only one quarter of what it is normally. Water levels are down 10 to 20 feet, the lowest ever recorded. The narrowed and shallow waterways have cut traffic on the Mississippi in half. Movement is slow and choked by barges that have run aground or are backed up waiting to pass dredge points. It's a crisis for this transportation-driven region of the country. A loss of 90% to 100% of our business opportunity. It's also another blow for drought-plagued farmers who are trying to get those crops they do harvest to market. And nationwide, consumers pay the cost for these shipping delays on top of the higher prices they're already paying due to crop shortfalls. The Army Corps of Engineers says it can keep the river passable, but River Services Incorporated, an independent study group, told the Weather Channel that they expect the river level to fall another one and a half to two feet over the next three weeks. They say the Corps will be hard-pressed to keep up. I'm Dennis Smith reporting. The southeastern United States is one of the area's hardest hit by the drought. The Tennessee Valley Authority, uh, uh, 29 hydropower plants normally supply 10% of the electricity for some 8 million southeastern customers, but with water becoming a rare commodity, the TVA has had to cut back to just 55% of capacity. The drought is taking a heavy toll in the Midwest, too. In Iowa, nine rivers have dropped to levels so low that farmers who normally irrigate with 500,000 gallons of water a day have been forced to cut their usage to only 25,000 gallons a day, just 5% of normal. When we come back, we'll talk some with Vince, who will take some of your questions. Our phone numbers are 1-800-327-0945. And if you live in Georgia, that's 1-404-434-9762. Give us a call. We'll be right back. Before I'd give up my Lysol spray, husband and the cigars would be out the door. Yeah. Ordinary air fresheners cover up odors with, with heavy perfumes and scents. Lysol spray kills the germs on the surfaces and cleans your air so that everything is fresh and clean and light. I can't live without this stuff. I can't live without Lysol spray. I wouldn't swap it for anything. There is no substitute for Lysol spray. There's nothing that you can replace it with. It takes care of all the odors in the air and cleans your air so that it's fresh. The current conditions. Six-hour forecast.
tuned for the latest weather information here on the Weather Channel. Gardeners, if you love fresh tasting vegetables and big beautiful flowers, but think results like this take too much time and too much backbreaking work, here's great news. Introducing the affordable Troy Built Junior, designed especially for smaller gardens. Just look at the time and work the Junior will save you. It's so easy to prepare perfect ready to plant seed beds. Plus, working organic matter into your soil is a snap. Spot till areas for beautiful flower gardens and borders. Why, you can even use the Junior to reseed your lawn or ring fruit trees. You'll be amazed at how much time and work the Junior will save you. So if you want to learn more about getting results like this, the fast, easy Troy Built way, call now to receive your free Troy Built catalog. For your free catalog featuring the Junior and our whole line of Troy Built tillers, including our no money down easy payment plan, call toll free 1-800-441-3434. Operators are standing by. That's 1-800-441-3434. Call now. This is Drop Watch on the Weather Channel. I'm John Doyle alongside Vince Miller. Vince Miller was born in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, <laughs> spent quite a while on television in Iowa, in the heart of some of the areas that have been hardest hit by the drought. I guess the obvious question, Vince, is why are we having this drought? And, you know, I'm going to give an answer that maybe isn't the answer folks are looking for because in some respects, they really don't know. And droughts, well, really are sort of in the natural scheme of things. Yes. We could take you back to the days of the pilgrims. And back in 1621, they were very concerned about, hey, what are we going to do if we, uh, the corn dies and mm -hmm. it rain for something like 24 days and there wasn't a store that they could go to down the street. <laughs> really? And we've had serious droughts uh, frequently in our history. We may have made this a bit worse, though, than it otherwise would have been through the greenhouse effect. We can certainly, though, show you how the jet stream has been affecting uh -huh. the weather because a jet stream pretty much determines what happens on the air surface. To show you what the jet stream was on the average for this winter and spring season just ended, we had what we call a split flow where we have both a subtropical jet stream and a polar jet stream, the blue being the polar jet. Basically, that position of the polar jet kept the well, real cold blasts of air out of the country for the most part during this last winter and spring. In fact, go back to the Olympics in Calgary and remember uh, how warm it was there, even mm -hmm. lack of snow. Take you on into the, uh, well, June that uh, is just ending. It shifted a bit to high pressure in the upper atmosphere that covered much of the country. A lot of sunshine and therefore, of course, not much in the way of clouds or rain. And in fact, from the prairie provinces of Canada, southern Canada to the northern Rockies, eastward to Portland, Maine, Burlington, Vermont, all-time record heat or all-time June record yeah. heat thanks to the jet stream pattern. Thanks, we got a call from uh, one of the dry spots in the northeastern part of the country, from Ohio, okay. from Miami, Ohio. If you can hear us, caller, please go right ahead and ask Vince your question. Yes, Vince, how are you? Very good, thank you. Uh, Vince, as farmers out here in Ohio, we have a desperate situation in corn and a developing desperate situation in soybeans. We're getting to the critical stages of tasseling in corn and the uh, filling of the pods will come later in the soybeans. Do you see any chance of relief in our belt over the next uh, 20 to 30 days or even 14 to 20 days? Well, if you get that far ahead, that yeah. gets really a little tricky to, to give you a forecast. We have seen a subtle change. In fact, in some respects, more than a subtle change in the upper air pattern. Remember how hot it was uh, in your part of the country on Saturday when you were setting uh, records in every station in Ohio. Two days later, it's uh, cooled down considerably. We've at least got rid of the heat for a while, but uh, significant rain's really not in sight any time in the near future for your part of the Corn Belt. Uh, Western Corn Belt, maybe some temporary relief for uh, those folks. Thank you, Vince. Uh, last night, Western Texas deluged with water. We've got a caller from Texas now down around the Austin Way. Austin, go right ahead. We've got a caller from Houston. Let's have that call. Yes. Uh a lot has been mentioned as far as the effect, the greenhouse effect on our temperatures and lower mm -hmm. latitudes like in Houston, mm -hmm. but nothing has been mentioned as far as what effect it's going to have on the winter temperatures, the winter extremes. Where, or can we expect a more extreme temperatures during winter time in the lower latitudes like in Houston, Texas? Some folks say that uh, the greenhouse effect would cause that, uh, more extremes. Uh, it depends how many scientists you talk to. You can almost get that many number of different versions. Most folks with greenhouse effect, though, say that the climate on the whole is going to warm up and the crop growing areas of the world will dry out. There are some scientists, though, who say that actually if the greenhouse effect continues, eventually we could be working our way fairly quickly into a new ice age. So Ooh. I didn't answer your question well because there's a lot of different uh, 
yeah. opinions. We're, oh, yes. we're, we're in a great experiment, unfortunately. We being mankind, we're putting all sorts of things in the atmosphere. We have no idea really just exactly what they're going to do to the atmosphere or our weather. And unfortunately, it's the type of learning process that could be uh, rather unhappy when we find out the results. Yeah, we kind of learn as we go. Uh, has, did anyone see this drought of 88 coming? I'm not sure. If we go back a little ways to the 80s, the southeast really has been in a long-term drought. Uh, we get into the Corn Belt areas, it's really only been a problem in the last several years. In the southeast, parts of the southeast and the Tennessee River Valley, for the decade of the 80s, are running 70 or 80 inches below normal in rainfall, mm -hmm. which means that we've lost more than a year's worth of rain over the last you know, seven or eight yeah. years. Now, that's yeah. a serious problem. Yeah, I, I hear you. And I guess if we got 10 inches of rain in one afternoon, that wouldn't necessarily recover a 10-inch deficit. There are it? parts of the Corn Belt that are 10 inches below normal, yeah. and theoretically, you could easily pick up 10 inches of rain from a thunderstorm, but unfortunately, most of it would run off, and that would not stop the drought, but it would be better than nothing. Vince, thank you very much. We'll be talking with Vince, I'm sure, later as we continue with our drought. Coming back, we'll be talking with a county extension agent who will give some tips on how we can all conserve water locally. Stay with us. Channel salutes the American family with a holiday family reunion contest. Win a weekend you cherish for a lifetime. A holiday family reunion at the Stouffer Hotel nearest your home for you and 19 family members. We'll fly your family from around the country for a Thanksgiving feast, catered and served by Stouffer Hotels and Resorts. You will each receive four nights accommodations plus $100 spending money. Five first prize winners receive a weekend vacation from Stouffer Hotels, including two nights accommodations, welcome champagne and continental breakfast and 25 runners up receive a 35 millimeter camera kit here's how you enter just fill out a postcard with your name address telephone number your age and the channel number and cable system on which you watch the weather channel then mail your postcard to holiday family reunion contest care of the weather channel atlanta georgia 30318-4001 deadline for entries is midnight july 24th so don't miss your chance to win enter the weather channel holiday family reunion contest today Stay tuned for the Days in 5-Day Business Planner, keeping track of storm systems, hazardous weather, and poor road conditions that may affect your business travel. The Days in 5-Day Business Planner, coming up in just a few minutes, right here on the Weather Channel, only on cable. The 36-Hour Forecast. This is Drought Watch on the Weather Channel. I'm John Doyle. Thank you for joining us along with me, Keith Zanzinger, who is a Cobb County Extension agent. Can't really speak for all counties across the country, but here in North Georgia, we're particularly hard hit, and so I'm sure you have some very definitive answers for us. Oh, by the way, I was amazed last week to hear that 45% of the counties in the country have uh, qualified for some kind of relief aid. That's an amazing number. That sure is a large number of counties there. Really? Very widespread drought. Well, what can we do as individuals, families living in the suburbs, uh, cons to, to conserve that water? I think one of the main things we can do is adopt an attitude of conservation. Uh, and along with that is if we save water, we also normally save money. So yeah. people can think uh, dollars and cents if they wanted to, but saving water can, uh, just developing an attitude can help. Outside in the lawn, sprinklers, people put them on all the time. One of the problems that they do, they water incorrectly. The best thing to do is be to water correct correctly and also to measure how much water they're putting out. They uh -huh. don't know how much water is out there. Uh, they've been told to run the sprinkler every other day for a couple hours. That's incorrect. Water once a week deeply 
an inch of water a week for most of our warm season grasses and maybe twice a week for cool season grasses. In the, in the bathrooms, you can do many things. Uh, one of the things you can do if you don't, if you have an old shower, put a, a flow restrictor in the shower head. Uh, this will reduce flow from anywhere from six to 10 gallons per minute down to two and a half to three gallons. Won't change the effect of the shower much, but you'll be saving water. And when you save hot water, you save money on heating the water as well. Absolutely. I think that uh, a lot of people have the idea that if they have a, a crack at uh, watering their lawn every other day, as the law allows, that that's what they ought to do, get out there and water that lawn down. Well, uh, in some cases, uh, maybe that might be the best thing to do in some areas of the country, like with bluegrass uh, up in the north, if it's really, really dry. But for most warm season grasses, once a week, water deeply, allow the soil to act like a, a soil bank, mm -hmm. or a water bank, so to speak, and then let it slowly dry out uh, and let air get down into the roots as well. Yeah. Well, we, uh, speaking of that, I had uh, seen a report uh, and I had heard stories of uh, folks who are farming that is plowing with a mule, not the, not the tractor keep that uh, ground aerated and I suppose somewhat more moist. Uh, yeah, what they're trying to do there probably is uh, what we call a dust mulch where the, the top portion of the soil is dry, it doesn't allow uh, conduction of water to yes. the surface to evaporate. Yes. Uh, evaporation is a big loss in this hot dry weather. I can hear you. We've got a phone call from Illinois. Illinois, if you're there, please ask Keith your question. Hi, in other ways, how should we save water? In, in um, other, other ways? Yeah, um, for normal. How should we cut back? Um, First of all, take shorter baths, take shorter showers, check your house for leaks. Your toilet is probably the biggest source of leaks. Uh, you can leak up to 200 gallons a day from Whoa. the toilet. So one of the things you can do is place a, uh, a dye, like food coloring, in the tank, and a half an hour later, if there's color in the bowl, you have a leak. Oh. Might only cost you, you know, two to five dollars to fix that, and information available at the local hardware store to fix that. Just fixing leaks can save five to 10 percent of the water consumption around the house. About uh, how much water do you expect we lose out of that little drip that comes out of the faucet uh, uh, at the sink? Uh, one drip per second can give you a loss of approximately uh, 7 to 10 gallons a day. Whoa. So you can make significant savings there. One way to check if your whole house is leak proof yes. uh -huh. is to make sure no one turns on the water, check your water meter, wait maybe one or two hours and check it again and make sure that it reads the same. If it doesn't, you've got water leaking somewhere. Thank you very much, Keith. I think that if you consider that when you turn that tap, it's money going down the drain these days. Might be a little more conscious of what's going on. In a moment, we'll be back to have Keith answer some more of your questions. Coming up, Marnie Stanier will be taking a close look at the next five days. One way to find a job is to look in publications. Lots of publications. Any luck? Well, I've got newspapers, magazines, trade papers. Find anything yet? Newsletters, phone books, you name it. There's a better way to find a better job. Honey, look at this. The National Business Employment Weekly. It's published by the Wall Street Journal. It lists hundreds of high-paying jobs all across the country. Now, what about managerial jobs? Managerial, professional, technical, sales like mine. It even has articles on interviewing, writing a better resume, and how to succeed once you get the job. What am I doing with all of these now that I have the National Business Employment Weekly? Pick up the National Business Employment Weekly at a newsstand or call 800-221-1200 and receive eight issues by first class mail for only $35. 800-221-1200. The National Business Employment Weekly. Don't make a career move without it. The current conditions. Our forecast. here on the Weather Channel. Now stay tuned for the Days In 5-Day Business Planner. America's waking up to Days Ends. 
Well, let's check on the maps and see who's going to get the rain. On into late afternoon Tuesday, we do see a chance for some rain in the northeast. Some spots like Buffalo and Niagara Falls are in for a chance for rain as a frontal system drops down there. And back of that, the cooler weather. And in the west, we have a lot of rain to talk about from Montana all the way into Texas and New Mexico, a widespread area of rain, and they need the rain right here. Good news, late afternoon Tuesday, that rain will be in the forecast, and it will continue, it looks like, on into early morning Wednesday, right along this frontal zone. But as we move into the afternoon hours, the heating starts to help out with those thunderstorms, and they will really start to build. We expect a good bet for rain from Montana through the Dakotas, all the way into Kansas and Oklahoma, all the way through back through places like Amarillo and to Dalhart, Dalhart, where they have the rain right now. Things will stay awfully dry in the southeast. Unfortunately, they desperately need the rain here. Rain deficits are at least 15 and 20 inches below normal from this time last year. So it doesn't look like that will uh, help out at all. But on into your Thursday, we do see a chance for some rain, possibly Friday. So good news there. Let's check on the high temperatures for Tuesday. They should be pretty nice in the northeast, 60s and 70s. So a nice cool pattern there. But those hot 90s will hang in there from Bismarck and Rapid City, even Billings. The hot 90s for you on Tuesday. They extend all the way into Texas, Louisiana, and all the way into Florida. Now, the 80s will hang tight in the Ohio Valley and some spots in the Great Lakes, but as we move the maps along, you'll see that on Wednesday, the heat really takes control of the southeast. Wednesday, no rain in the southeast, but you will have the hot, hot weather, so dress for that. In the northeast, 60s and the 70s, hot temperatures in the southwest, a pretty typical pattern for this time during the year with that thermal low. Thursday, again, the hot weather will hang in the nation's midsection, 90s and 100s. Some places like, well, McAllister will reach probably the century mark, and that will continue, it looks like, by your Friday. And a hot 4th of July weekend for a lot of folks in the nation's midsection on Saturday from Bismarck to Dallas. Those hot temperatures, cooler though, that cool pattern will hang in there in the northeast. Again, by your Sunday, the weekend looking pretty nice. If you like the hot weather in Texas, you will have it, even into Laredo, Texas, the hot weather. Now, we want to talk about the rain. A lot of folks certainly need it in the southeast, and it looks like they will get it on Thursday. Atlanta, it's kind of a borderline thing for you, but the strong storms drift to the southeast right along that front by Friday, so some spots here will get the much-needed rain. More scattered showers in the mountains from the Dakotas all the way back into Arizona and New Mexico. This will continue in the west, just the scattered afternoon rain for some folks on your 4th of July weekend. Things will stay awfully dry, though, all in all, for most folks in the east where they desperately need that rain. The widely scattered afternoon rain showers from Florida back into Louisiana, and it looks like this rain will continue in a band from Minnesota all the way back into Arizona and New Mexico. Now some regional observations for you. about days in simple super saver program restrictions do apply and simple super saver rooms are limited so call now john doyle and vince miller are up next as drought watch continues please stay tuned you're watching the weather channel ben here it is baton rouge on the 12th little rock on the 13th tampa on the 15th dayton and columbus on the 17th same day same state st louis on the 18th new york on the 20th ben Stay in a nice place. Just don't overdo it. People notice that stuff. Called Days In. America's waking up to us. Nice job, Ben. Thanks. Call 800-325-2525 for reservations at Days Ends nationwide. You're watching Drought Watch on the Weather Channel. I'm John Doyle, and with me, Keith Zanzinger, Cobb County Extension Agent. We've been taking some calls from you folks around the country who are concerned about the drought. We have a call right now from Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Go ahead, New Jersey. Yes, my, qu my question is concerning the quality and quantity of drinking water. In what respect? And how would it be affected? By the drought overall? Yes. Um, well, the... The problem is that in some cases, some of the reservoirs are going dry, uh, and actually here in Georgia, several inlets uh, are also high and dry mm -hmm. in some of the lakes, so uh, you press for water, and a lot of the water is going to be recycled. In other words, water will be used upstream, uh, be treated, and be put downstream, and once you do that, you, you run the risk of 
uh, having more contaminants in the water uh, overall. Makes sense. Yeah. That's we a had, complicated subject. Yeah, really. Now, we had a report a little earlier overnight down around New Orleans. The mouth of the Mississippi is about as low as it's been in 50 years there. So low and it's moving so slowly that that salt water from the Gulf of Mexico is actually backing on up, moving upstream. So it is a definite yeah. problem in some yeah. areas. Those municipalities it? are threatened right away. Yeah, right away. Uh, as far as dishwashers and all of that at home, any tips on that? Oh, there's lots of tips you can do around the home. Uh, always use a, a f wash a full load of clothes if you're going to wash clothes. Always wash a full load of uh, in the dishwasher. Uh, try to uh, reduce the amount of dishes that you generate uh, so mm -hmm. that you do uh, less dishwashing. Paper which plates. uses anywhere from 25 to 40 gallons when you wash. So, uh, But the dishwasher overall is more effective or more efficient than do doing hand washing ah. quite frequently. So. Well, I, I know that there are a lot of husbands who will be glad to hear <laughs> that too. Keith, thank you very much for being with us and would also thank like you. to thank uh, uh, Vince Miller, meteorologist here at the Weather Channel, for giving his expertise. Tonight at 8, Jeff Morrow will have as his guest Georgia Secretary of Agriculture Tommy Irvin. He'll be here to answer your questions about how the drought will affect the farmer and the grocery store. And join us again here tomorrow at noon when we'll look at the drought and the economy. Well then, thanks for joining us and good afternoon.